Hello booktube, coming to you with a second video today, uh, because you don't seem to mind, and I'm still testing out this this fi new filming thing. I had a f I had a, a technical difficulty, and those things you might think nothing of it, but they they throw me into turmoil because this all is magic to me. Uh, but I made a couple of videos the old way uh, on on the laptop that I simply cannot communicate to BookTube. I've, I've tried, my teenagers have tried, it still hasn't worked. It will eventually, and they'll be archived, I'm sure, but, but right now they constitute the Donahue lost tapes, as it were. And one of those videos was where I enthused about a little batch of books that I found at my beloved Brattle Bookshop. And uh, those books have now gone. They've They've mulched into the collection. But I, I just went shopping Also, I went to a library thrift shop and uh, found a bunch of other books and I wanted to make a video because it feels like I feels like I owe you those even though you've never seen them. Uh, you will someday, I'm sure. But uh, in the meantime, I thought I would just go through. I found uh, a stack of biographies, which is my favorite kind of reading. And I wanted to show them to you talk a little about them. Uh, first one being this chunker. This is the one volume abridgment of Leon Edel's biography of Henry James. Uh, he wrote a multi-volume biography of James that was famously, sniffingly condemned by Gore Vidal as a great historical novel. <sighs> Which is classic Vidal for being two-faced and hypocritical, because the, the, not only are the, was the, the Leon Edel multiple volume Henry James biography prodigiously researched is in fiction but also the, when Vidal calls it the, a great historical novel there's a bit of a put down there isn't it and that's hypocritical because if you called Vidal's own historical fiction anything less than perfection you'd get a snitty letter <laughs> so uh, best to ignore that if you even knew it in the first place uh, this is this is fantastic narrative biography and it was it was nice to see the one volume in hardcover I have the paperback uh, somewhere, but I, I much prefer the hardcover because I'm going to reread all of Henry James in about a year, and I'm going to reread the biography as well. And the next one you might, some of you might have seen it on uh, on my Twitter. Uh, it's this thing from uh, it's it's uh, John Singleton Copley, his domestic and artistic life by Martha Babcock Amory. <laughs> it's a uh, it's from uh, 1882, the classic Brattle find, uh, and it. When I originally found it, it had somebody, some busybody from the Athenaeum, <laughs> had stuck a piece of paper on the cover saying, please preserve this book, uh, because of the genealogical connections of the author. <laughs> so this is the only thing that ever mattered in, 18th century, in 19th century Boston. Uh, but it's, a, it's one of those full soup-to-nut life and times biographies, and it's of the great artist, John Singleton Copley. Uh, and it includes tons and tons of correspondence, as these old volumes always did, but which as new volumes, new biography of him never would. Uh, so I love reading these things, and they turn up regularly at the Brattle for, you know, $3. So I grab them, uh, especially if it's somebody that, I, you know, I'm inherently interested in. Uh, another one is a rebuy, a double. This is uh, Stacey Schiff's great biography of, of Cleopatra, uh, which I got as... An electronic galley, and then as an ARC, and then as a finished copy, and then as a paperback. And I've also found many copies used, and I reviewed it for, for the Wall Street Journal, I think. Uh, so it's a, it's a full life cycle of the book with me. But if I see it for 20 cents, I grab it because one of you will want it. <laughs> Somebody will want it. Uh, and it's so good. Same thing with this one. Uh, this is Antonia Fraser's Royal Charles, her biography of Charles II. There he is, the Merry Monarch himself, wearing a kind of restoration sombrero. Uh, Charles has had many, many biographies because he's so picturesque. You know, he's got the, the wit and the cynical attitude and the mistresses and, and, and the illusion of bravery <laughs> during the Great Fire of London. Uh, and this is by far my favorite biography of him, even though he's had all that biographical attention. I don't I'm a big fan of Antonia Fraser, <laughs> and this is one of my favorite of her biographies. Uh, and I have it already, of course. I have a hardcover copy already. Uh, but if I see it for 20 cents, I'm going to get it, because sooner or later I'm going to want to give it away. <laughs> I know. 
I have a problem. <laughs> you do too. So, <laughs> and then uh, the last of the biographies was this personal history by Catherine Grant, the publisher of the Washington Post during the Watergate uh, expose that brought down President Nixon. Uh, she promised for years and years and years to write this book, and then finally she did, and it's a doorstop, and it's just wonderful. When she escapes from being prim and proper and historically observant in these pages and sort of lapses into uh, anecdotes, you can hear her voice all over again, like she, is, like she wasn't even gone. Uh, it's just delightful. Uh, uh, and I have a copy, <laughs> and this is a little bit longer shot than Cleopatra or Charles II, but I could find somebody who would be interested <laughs> in this, and if I do, I'll be ready. <laughs> and then there was one book that wasn't a biography but again for 20 cents I had to get it and it's this Civilization the West and the Rest by Neil Ferguson it's, uh, it's a, a rather rather unapologetically chauvinistic history of Western civilization uh, it's lively lively as heck because everything he writes is and it caused uh, sparked a controversy in the in the TLS and elsewhere uh, because Pankaj Mishra, who's a writer I really, really like, uh, called the book onto the carpet for its implicit bloated imperialism. <laughs> and rightfully so. And uh, Ferguson vociferously protested being categorized that way, you know, and I, as well he should, because he spent a long time, he and his research assistants spent a long time writing this thing. Uh, but uh, I still think there's some truth to it, and the, the book is uh, fantastic anyway no matter what the controversy is so uh and i have a copy i have a uk edition but i got this because it's a wonderful thing for a, a, especially a new student of history to read uh and, and i know a thousand more of those potential recipients now than i did a year ago <laughs> so uh i guess this is rather a diseased little book hall isn't it since there isn't a single thing in it i don't already own but uh <laughs> I still thought I'd show it to you anyway because the books are fascinating and some of you might want them just sing out if you do <laughs> and I'll see you later book two let me know also about the quality of these things still I, I, I want to know if this is working uh, but anyway uh, that's, that's it for now thank you book two <laughs>